Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy is endure it forever. Bless His name, for His mercy is endure it forever. We welcome you once again to this service hosted by the Faith, Hope, and Love Center. Welcome. I am Don Hamilton, the senior pastor, and on, pastor on behalf of all of the pastors and the board, we bless you and we welcome you. Today we are going to continue our time of worship and praise, our time of intercession, and certainly we get to the Word of God. And today we want to speak on the topic, Good Intentions, The Road to Hell, and You. We'll be right back. Yes. 
Father, we thank you that we can come to you in the name of Jesus. His is the name that is above all names. We thank you that it is to his name alone has been given all authority in heaven and on the earth. Father, we thank you that by your grace you have seated us with Christ in the heavenly realms, far above every principality and power. And by doing so, whatever is under Christ's feet is under ours. Father, we thank you that you have ratified through Jesus Christ every promise and every covenant to the church of which Jesus is the head. We thank you that you did so to manifest through the church your wisdom to the principalities and powers in the heavenly realms. Father, we pray that by the authority which Christ possesses to subdue all things to himself, that you cause the citizens of your kingdom to walk in victory, especially in this season. Father, for your name's sake, show to the world your ability to provide and protect your children. Father, the earth is yours, the fullness of it and all who dwell in it. Use the resources of the earth to provide for your people who are affected by this pandemic. Provide that they may have enough to share to those who do not know you and need to see a sign of your goodness. Father, use the resources of this earth to provide for the citizens of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Bless, according to your word, those who give to this nation and increase their harvest of righteousness. Father, we thank you that no situation we face individually, as a family, as a nation, or nations of the world, is outside your knowledge. And no situation is beyond the reach of your power. You are the God who conforms all things after the counsel of your own will. And you work all things, even the bad, for good to those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Father, we didn't choose you, but you chose us. And you appointed us to bear fruit that remains. Give us what we need to bear your fruit so that we will conform to the likeness of Jesus. In the authority of Jesus' name we pray and we give you thanks. Amen. Thank you very much, worship team and intercessor. And now we get to the ministry of the word. Our good intention, the road to hell, and you. We are reading for our text, 1 Chronicles chapter 13, verses 9 through 11. And when they came to Chidon's dressing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and he struck him because he put his hand to the ark, and he died there before God. And David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah. Therefore, that place is called Perez Uza to this day. There is a saying that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. But what does the saying mean? For many years, we have examined the saying. And why is the road to hell paved with good intention. From our understanding, this proverbial saying suggests that we may have all good intention and motive, but if there isn't a corresponding action, to match the intention or the intention falls miserably short. And so I could wish, I could believe, I could think of doing such and such. I never meant to do such and such. But with all good intention, if there isn't a corresponding reality, to match the good intention, then the road to hell is paved with good intention. 
Some have suggested that God constantly calls men and women to repentance, calls men and women into a right relationship with Him. But yet, many persons there are forever saying, Well, I have intention of doing it, I have intention of serving God. Maybe one day I will do it. And God knows what's going on in my heart. But there is no action towards Christ, towards the cross, towards repentance. And so we speak today on the topic, good intentions, the road to hell, and you. May I suggest initially here seven reasons why we think that there is a truth in this statement. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Number one, there is the questionable yardstick of this subjective peace and purity of heart that some people brag about. I drew this quote from online. Here's what it says. At the end of the day, I am at peace because my intentions are good and my heart is pure. You see, we are using good intentions as a yardstick to evaluate what we have done. I have said to someone recently, when they were speaking to a certain action, and then they modify it by saying, well, I didn't mean it. I didn't have any intention to do harm. And I had to say to that person, stray bullets still kill. But there are those who retreat into their consciences. My, my conscience is not bothering me. My heart is pure. My intentions were good. Oh, how fragile that may be. The road to hell is paved with good intention. Number two, there is this incredulous sanitizing of the consequences of our action. We sanitize the consequences of our action. Another quote says like this, as long as my intentions were good, I am okay with how any situation plays out. Oh, this popular philosophy and pop popular thinking really speaks to the road to hell is paved with good intention. Here it is. As long as my intentions were good, I am okay with how things turn out. Some things turn out tragically. Some things turn out disastrously. Some things turn out with a mass of confusion. We cannot simply say, as long as my intentions are good, I'm okay with how the situation turns out. Number three, there is the inevitable consequences of poor results. Thomas Edison is cited as saying, a good intention with a bad approach often leads to Poor results. A good intention with a bad approach often leads to a poor result. In other words, good intentions are not enough. I could have good intentions, but my approach is less than desirable. So when you have good intention and a less than desirable approach, Edison says, it would lead to poor results. Number four, bad intention, bad decisions are what they are. Bad decisions. As one person put it like this, bad decisions made with good intentions are still bad decisions. You see, we do not make bad decisions good decisions because of the intention. 
You know, I have a friend who said, in this rat race, it doesn't matter if you come first. It's still a rat race. And maybe you are still a rat. Because bad decisions are what they are. They are bad decisions. Number five. With all the sanitizing that we do, good intentions cannot sanitize sin. And sin is the moral transgression of the law of Almighty God. And so I agree with one author who said, a sin can never be turned into obedience by good, by good intentions. A sin can never be turned into obedience by good intention. I remember King Saul. God says when they move in, destroy everything. He kept the best. And when Samuel came to him, he thought that he could keep the forbidden to offer it as a sacrifice to God. And Samuel said to him, Obedience is better than sacrifice because you cannot sanitize sin by good intention. Number six, good intentions do not solve the sin problem. So you could sanitize or attempt to sanitize sin, but you could also try to solve the sin problem. As Johnny Hunt put it, all our good works and good intentions can't solve our sin problem. It's far deeper than that. And so I can go to Almighty God and brag and boast about what I did and why I did it as if to score points with God. No, sir. Good intentions do not solve the sin problem. And number seven. Quoting from an Indonesian economist on the heel of the tsunami that struck Indonesia some years ago. Good intentions with my own way of doing things still breeds problems. Here is what Sri Moyani Indrawati says. Everyone with all those good intentions came to help Indonesia rebuild from the tsunami. But the coordination problem was very big because they came with their own way of doing business. They came with the inflexibility of their own governance. Oh, yes, they went to Indonesia with good intentions, but they had their own way of doing business, and own way of governance. And it created more problems for Indonesia. Because good intentions is not good enough. You see, good intentions must be governed by God's wisdom. And so the thought captured online says, good intentions need to be governed by God's wisdom. Or they lead down the wrong path. What should be sanitizing my intention is the word of God, the wisdom of God, the ways of God. I cannot sanitize wrong by good intentions. I sanitize my good intentions by the word of God. And so the passage that we read spoke to good intentions which led to the death of Uzzah. And David was angry. David was disturbed. David was displeased. Because here it is. One of his servants, with all good intentions, made the wrong decision. And God struck him, and he died there. When we come back, we want to look at Uza. We want to look at this good intentions which led to wrong action, which led to his death. Because the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So while we delay, while we procrastinate, 
while we hear the call of God calling on you, pulling you, tugging you, beckoning you. And while we generate, well, you know, I have all intentions to serve God. Well, I have all intentions to go to the house of God. Well, I have all good intentions. And there are no legs that proactively and in, in, in a literal sense, move your good intentions towards a desired outcome. You may stand before the judgment bar of God. And he would say, depart from me, I don't know you. While we say, God, I had all intentions, but I didn't have the opportunity. The opportunity is yours. Good intentions, the road to hell, and you. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We are talking about good intentions, the road to hell, and you. And we now use the example of one of David's men, Uza. But let's give the context and the background. You see, the Ark of the Covenant was away from the people of God for quite a number of years. And David had in his heart to bring the Ark of the Covenant to the city of Jerusalem. And make it once again the national center of spirituality. You see, the ark of, of our God had come back from the land of the Philistines some 70 years before, based on 1 Samuel 7 1. In those years, it sat in the house of Abinadab. But now David and the people wanted to bring it back to the center of national consciousness. Because the ark of the Lord represented the presence of God. God commanded Moses to make it more than 400 years before David's time. It was a wooden box. The word ark means box or chest, completely covered with gold and with an ornament gold lid on top of it, known as the mercy seat with two angels facing each other. The Ark of God or the Ark of the Covenant was three feet nine inches long, two feet three inches wide, and two feet three inches high. In it were the tablets of the law that Moses brought down from Mount Sinai, a jar of manna, and then Aaron's rod that miraculous bodied as confirmation of his leadership, says David Gozek. And so in David's heart, he wants to bring the ark to its rightful place in Jerusalem. So number one, he had consultation. In fact, in 1 Chronicles 31, the 13 and verse 1, the Bible says, And David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, if it seem good unto you, and that it be of the Lord our God, let us send abroad that unto our brethren everywhere that left in the land of Israel, and with them also to the priests and the Levites, which are their cities and suburbs, that they may gather themselves unto us. And uh, First Chronicles 13.3, let us bring again the ark of our Lord God to us, for we inquired not of it even unto the days of Saul. And all the congregation said that they would do so, for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. And so with the consultation, David consulted the captains, he consulted the leaders, 
He consulted the congregation and he says, let us bring the ark home. And all agreed that this was the right thing to do. So David started well and there was a unanimous agreement in this consultation that it was the right thing to do. Oh, how many times we have started right, but we need to keep perpendicular to the word of Almighty God. Secondly, David, having done the consultation, they decided to use a cart. So in 13, 5, 6, and 7 of 1 Chronicles, the Bible says, So David gathered all Israel together from Sheol of Egypt, even unto to the entering of Hemat, to bring the ark of God from Kijat to Rim. And David went up and all Israel to Bala, that is, to Kijat to Rim, which belonged to Judah, to bring up thence the ark of God, the Lord, that dwelleth between the cherubims whose name called on it. Listen to this in 13.7. And they carried the ark of God in a new cart out of the house of Abinadab. And Uzzah and Ohio drove, drove the cart. Interestingly enough, the consultation, then there's this new cart. And I suppose in David's mind and in the congregation mind, oh, it is the ark of the Lord. It should not be driven on any old cart we need to have pump we need to have a ray we need to have fanfare we need to have a new cart to place the ark of god as we bring it we need two drivers to bring the ark home so there was a consultation there was the cart there was a celebration in 13 8 and david and all israel played before god with all their might and with singing and with harps, and with psaltery, and with timbrels, and with cymbals, and with trumpets. Oh, it was a festive time. For many, many years, the ark was not in Israel. And so, he consulted, he made a new cart, and he celebrated. What could go wrong? And so, number four, complications developed. We find in 1 Chronicles 39, And when they came onto the threshing floor of Chidon, Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. Complication developed. Because they had the consultation. They had the new cart. They had the celebration. But somewhere along the road, they probably did not anticipate that there will be some complication. The ark seems as it were was going to fall because the oxen stumbled. This new cart and Uzzah put forth his hand to grab the ark from falling. All up until this time, good intention. Good intention to consult the people. Good intention to celebrate and to bless Almighty God. Good intention to put it on a new card. Good intention all the way. But there is complication. Number five, there is chastisement. In First Chronicles 13.10, Anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah and he smote him. Why? Because he put his hand to the ark and there he died before God. It seems to be an unassuming act. It seemed that God was using a sledgehammer to crack a peanut. It seemed that the punishment did not meet the crime. But what crime is it? Here it is. We are returning the ark of God home. And what could go wrong on this new cart? What could go wrong with all of this celebration? And what was wrong if the oxen stumble and this young man reached forth his hand to save the ark from falling? 
why would God chastise him with death? So David, number six, obviously complained to God. And this is what the Bible says in Chronicles 13, 11. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. Wherefore, that place is called Perusa to this day. So you understand, David felt that God was being unreasonable. David was angry and displeased with God. And I can hear the dialogue going on. What are you up to, God? In our heart, we want to bring the ark home. In our heart, we are bringing it from the camp and into its place where it should be. In our heart, we are celebrating. God, I consulted all of the elders. Obviously, they were on board. The congregation was on board. Why did you kill this young man? And David complained. And that place was called Uzzah. You see, the term or the word and the name Uzzah, the breach of Uzzah, as it was now called, is the outbreak against Uzzah. To burst out against him. To break out. To defeat. And why would God then do that? David Gozak says, the meaning of the names of these sons of Abinadab paint a meaningful picture. Uza means strength and Ohio means friendly. But here it is. God broke out and killed the young man. So number seven, it obviously led to confusion. So David said to God in 1 Chronicles 13, 12, and David was afraid of God that they said, how shall I bring the ark of God home to me? So David brought not the ark home to himself, to the city of, of David. But carried it aside into the house of Obenadom, the Gittite. The Gittite. And, and the ark of God remained with the family of Obenadom in his house three months. And the Lord blessed him and all that he had. So David is in a state of confusion. And so many people, they are confused because they are sanitizing their crime. They are sanitizing their good behavior. I have heard someone said to me, well, you know, I didn't mean nothing by my words. I'm a plain speaker. That's how I am. That's my personality. But mash your brakes. While you may not mean anything by your words, why is it in the aftermath there are so many wounded, hurting, bleeding, confused people? I must be concerned to go beyond good intention. And so David is asking God, how do you expect me to bring it? You see, my friend, David's anger, according to Guzek, who I've quoted significantly in this sharing, was based in confusion. He couldn't understand why his good intentions weren't enough. God is concerned with both our intentions and our action. He did not need to be afraid of God. But afraid of his own sin. There was no problem with God. Or the ark itself. Because you notice God is blessing this particular family. The problem was with the lack of knowledge and obedience. On the part of David. And those who help him. plan the entrance of the ark into Jerusalem. With all the advisors. You still need to obey Almighty God because the road to hell is paid with destruction. And so, David had to come around to compliance. What did he do in First Chronicles 15, 12? And he said unto them, Ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both ye you and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it. For, First Corinthians Chronicles 15, 13, because you did it not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us. For that we sought him not after the due order. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. And guess what the Bible says? And the children of the Levites Bear the ark of God upon their 
shoulders with the staff thereof as Moses commanded according to the word of God. Nowhere was there a command to carry the ark on a new cart. Yes, you can have your consultation. Yes, you can have your celebration. Yes, you can have all of the fanfare. But if it is not done according to the word of God, according to obedience to God, God may intervene and strike us and we must face the consequences of our action. And so the children of Israel, according to 1515 of Chronicles, they, they, the Levites bear the ark on their shoulders and that is what God intended them to do. And now you have a different kind of a celebration. For in 1516, the Bible says, And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be singers, to bring music, psaltery, harp, cymbals. Why? Because this celebration was now in accordance with the command of Almighty God. No condemnation or guilt, but only the blessings of Almighty God. Today, my friend, with all of your good intentions, we can still be doing damage to people. But ultimately, with all our good intentions, you may still find yourself in a Christless eternity. What does God desire? Oh, yes. Chat with this one and chat with that one. And have all the consultation that you may have. But I'll tell you this. You can do all the fanfare and have a new cart. Some churches have gone to all elaborate schemes. Go right ahead. But guess what? There will be some complications if it's not done according to God's command. And with the complications, there are those who would jump into the fray to try to assist. And God will chastise and judge. And then we will rock back as if we don't know what we did and begin to complain to Almighty God and get angry with God because God judged. Because things didn't turn out. Because there was a breach. And we go into a state of confusion. But all God wants of us is compliance. As He has dictated, this is how I want you to speak. This is how I want you to behave. This is how I want you to live. This is how you must conduct yourself. So God has called us and God is saying the road to hell could be paved with good intentions but you can turn around. Let your actions, your intention be in accordance with the word of Almighty God. God richly bless you today and make a choice. Take the intention from your head and move forward. Take the intention from your heart and move forward towards the cross of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Fisherman, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Korean Christian and dancing in memory.